My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramer America. Other people want to make friends, I'm just trying to make you some money. My job is not just to entertain you, but to educate and teach you, so call me at 1-800-743-CNBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. Bye-bye, great reopening. Hello, counter-trend rally. Today, this market soured on the big winners from the just-ended first quarter as investors piled into the high-flying growth stocks that spent the last couple of months just getting hammered, sometimes mercilessly. Dow closing down 85 points, as it be gaining 0.36, new record, and the NASDAQ, where the lost souls are clustered, surged 1.54%. Bye, bye, bye. So you got to ask yourself, has this market suddenly changed its stripes? Or are last year's big winners simply getting a temporary reprieve from a horrendous sell-off? If you're hoping that happy days are here again for tech, I've got uh, some lukewarm news. To understand what's happening with these former market darlings, yeah, I'm talking about it, and these are generic, the snowflakes, the Z-scale, or ServiceNow's sales forces, you need to remember why they got so disliked. Why did the stocks of Apple or Amazon or Adobe become such dogs, even as their business is extraordinary? I mean, I got to tell you, that Adobe conference call, Adobe call was unbelievable. The stock didn't do anything. For some of today's move is probably just about the mechanics of money management. Mutual funds that have to disclose their positions have been reluctant to show that they own these names. It makes them look real stupid, right? You don't want your clients to see that you own such obvious losers. Many firms do reveal their holdings before the end of the quarter. Hey, so they can buy these names today, uh, last day, without making themselves look bad. But they care tremendously about that. Why are these stocks so embarrassing for professional money managers? Because this quarter has been all about the great reopening, thanks to our surprisingly effective vaccination program. We could be on the verge of an unprecedented boom, the Roaring Twenties, this time with a different century. And in a boom, you want companies that are joined at the hip with the economy, not companies that do just fine, regardless of the economy that we were all taught to like. So I'm going to give you a case in point. We're going to use this as the metaphor for the market so I can explain to you what's really going on behind the scenes. This is the stock of Cleveland Cliffs, okay, up nearly 17 percent just today. Now, unlike Fang or the Cloud Kings, Cleveland Cliffs is the opposite of exciting. This is an old-fashioned company that mines and processes iron ore so that it can be used to make steel. There is nothing sexy about Cleveland Cliffs, but when the economy is booming, institutional money managers don't want stocks with sex appeal like a ServiceNow or a Salesforce. They want industrial smokestack stocks that can deliver gigantic earnings beats like the one we got just today from Cleveland Cliffs. Let's stick with this. Can you blame them? Last night, Cleveland Cliffs pronounced a sharply better than expected quarter, something these tech companies almost never do. When you get a positive pre-announcement, something that says Wall Street has no idea how well this company's doing, well, that creates tremendous buying interest. No wonder the stock caught fire today, delivering some fabulous performance for the money managers who found the stock of this ancient Cleveland company ahead of the pre-announcement. You wanted to be in right there, but we're not done. Let's keep using this. I can practically hear some of you saying, who the heck cares about iron, about pellets of iron? I mean, doesn't the future belong to data centers, semiconductors, Internet of Things, software service? Are we really getting all excited about a pathetic old Cleveland ironworks? To which I say, if you're thinking like that, you're missing the point of this entire industry we call Wall Street. Money managers don't care about iron. They're salivating over the comparisons that Cleveland Cliffs is generating versus last year. Remember, the number one driver of stock prices is whether or not a company can beat the earnings estimates that are created by Wall Street research analysts. The larger the beat, the larger the gain. Cleveland Cliffs says they can do $500 million in earnings for interest taxes, depreciation, and amortization. This quarter, Wall Street was only looking for less than $400 million. That's a gigunda beat. The great tech companies haven't been able to demonstrate that they can deliver that kind of beat, at least not sustainably. Hey, look, look at DocuSign and Zoom, for instance, okay? They did report monster beats, but Wall Street believes those gains are ephemeral, that they'll evaporate once the country fully reopens for business. The other kinds of beats, they're all kind of, I'm not saying they're manufactured, but they're just kind of a little better than expected. So on the one hand, you have the stocks of gigantic name brand growth companies that can maybe offer modest upside surprises. And on the other hand, you have the stocks 
of industrial companies that are producing huge beats, such big beats that they have to literally put out a press release saying the numbers that we were going to save, we were going to give you in another three weeks. We have to do them now. We have to reveal them because they're so much better than the estimates. And remember, Cleveland Cliffs is delivering these numbers even before Biden's huge infrastructure plan that was announced tonight. If Congress passes even a fraction of what he wants when it comes to infrastructure, that represents tons and tons of business for these guys. Let me put this of the way that maybe you can, I'm trying so hard to get your head around this, but even though most of the industrials sold off today and the formerly high-flying tech stocks soared, the standout performer was still a 174-year-old iron and steel play. And look, the tech stocks weren't roaring today because Wall Street expects them to put up explosive earnings growth. No, that could propel their shares into the stratosphere. They're simply not part of the grand reopening story. They don't fit into the thesis that the big trigger pullers want. That's why I'm calling today counter trend. This is counter trend. Making matters worse, their stocks are too expensive for most professional money managers. These veterans prefer to buy stocks that trade on their price to earnings ratios, not on the more dear price to sales ratios, often default metric because there are no earnings. Sure, they will go for a Facebook or an Alphabet. You know what? Those stocks are so beaten down that they actually qualify as cheap even versus the industrials. I'd argue that Apple's in the same boat. But most of the tech stocks that flew today simply can't be counted on for big runs here because they don't fit the money manager profile. At best, they can get a couple days' worth of momentum. Now, you don't have to agree with the money managers who are making these calls, but you do need to respect their preferences because they run so much money that they can move stocks. They want any industrial company that can deliver incredible gains in a rapidly growing economy. We might have 10% GDP peak growth this quarter as America officially reopens and the stimulus comes flooding in. And look, it's not just that the industrials have better comparisons year over year. You got that inflation issue I talk about. As the economy gains momentum, that tends to produce higher inflation. Inflation is devastating for fantastic companies like these. Why? Because their stocks trade on potential earnings five to ten years down the road. But inflation means those future dollars have a lot less purchasing power and those earnings are just eroded. Now, I don't want to rain on anybody's parade, especially not when the S&P hitting that all-time high today, showing that there's poor participation in the move. And I'm not telling you you got to bail on some of the great growth stocks of the time of which these are included. However, I do want you to look over your portfolio and do some critical thinking about how many of 2020's best performers you really want to own versus the ones that are performing well in 2021. As the second quarter gets rolling, I think this market will become even kinder to the industrials. And by the way, the banks, and even less hospitable to tech and healthcare. Remember, I don't want you getting blown out of this market because you're experiencing heavy losses in great companies like these. When you see these counter trend rallies like we got today and perhaps tomorrow, I think you need to think of them as opportunities to reposition. You don't have to sell all your high flying tech names. That would be a big mistake. But if your portfolio only contains companies that look like this with big sales growth and not a lot of earnings, you might want to sell some of them and swap into what's working. Look, I know you could argue it's better to own a Unity. What a great company. CrowdStrike. We have them on their fantastic Zendesk. You know I like them. Ring Central. How fantastic are they than some dirty old iron company? You would have been absolutely right last year. But 2021 is a whole new market that once again is playing by the old institutional rules that befuddle so many amateur investors and first timers. Here's the bottom line. Money managers don't care about the most exciting long term growth stories like the ones that are behind me. They want the companies that can deliver the biggest upside surprises right here, like Cleveland Cliffs. And if in a booming economy, that means owning boom and bust cyclicals like CLF and not the stocks of companies that may represent future growth or may not, depending upon their execution and the execution of their competitors. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Cramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Cramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.